In this video, we'll look at how to use Smart Debug and its built-in debug facilities for Polar Fire SOC. To get started using Smart Debug, we've a copy of the Icicle Kit reference design opened here and the design flow run with the board programmed. To use Smart Debug, we need to run the Generate Smart Debug FPGA Array data step in the design flow to have data for Smart Debug to use. You can double click on this step to run it. Now that the data has been generated, you can launch Smart Debug by double clicking on Smart Debug Design from the Debug Design section of the design flow. Now that Smart Debug is launched, we've several options for the different aspects of our SOC FPGA that we might want to debug. The first thing to highlight is that Smart Debug will read an ID code from your device along with a project checksum and it does this to verify that the bitstream programmed to the device matches the bitstream used to generate the Smart Debug FPGA array data. If the design programmed into the FPGA doesn't match the checksum Smart Debug is expecting, we'll get a warning here letting us know things are out of sync. As well as viewing the checksum, you can also view your device status. So for example, if we scroll down a bit, you can view the programming cycle count for your device. You can also see the design name and checksum along with the design version. You get some information on the digests for the design components and you can also see programming information down at the bottom. That's all very useful information and there's a lot more that you can do with Smart Debug. So let's have a look at the MSS register access function now. When we select this option, we're presented with a list of all of the MSS registers that are accessible to Smart Debug over on the left. And on the right, we have a register operations view. So let's add in some registers and see how this view works. For example, let's say we had a few peripherals that weren't behaving as expected and we wanted to check their reset status. But we can go and have a look in the Polar Fire MSS top sysreg for the MSS registers. And then if we scroll down a bit, we can find the soft reset controller register. And if we add that into the register operations view now, we can see it appears here and we can expand it and see a list and a definition for each bit or collection of bits in this register. If we read it now, we get the current state of the register on the device. So now we can go down through the list and see the status of the reset for each of our individual MSS peripherals and whether they're turned off or turned on. So as an example, if I bring over COM15 from my PC, which is connected to MMUART1 on the MSS, which is not in reset, I can enter characters on the keyboard and run commands like echo hello and see them printed back out to me. And I could enter text into the terminal, such as test, and then backspace it out to see it removed. But now, if we go back to Smart Debug and select UART1 and write a 1 into its reset bit by entering a value into the right field and then selecting the right option, we've now updated the register value. So if we read the register once again, the MMUART1 field and the register value have updated. If we return to the serial terminal and we try to enter any values or run any commands, there's no activity on this COM port now, as the UART is being held in reset. And we can use the MSS register access feature to access and check values in any of the MSS registers that are listed off in the register hierarchy shown here. So that's been a quick look at our MSS register access feature. We also have the ability to debug the ENVM, which is quite similar to debugging the SNVM. So let's have a look at them together. When you're debugging the ENVM, you need to enter a start and end page to look at, and these have to be between 0 and 512. So let's look at pages 0 all the way up to page 10, and that's 11 pages total. So let's read from the device now. Now that we've done that, all of our data has shown up here, and if we scroll down, we can see that each page is shaded in a different colour to let you know when you've moved from one page to another. If you weren't sure of the contents of your ENVM or you wanted to verify that the data was accurate, you can use the ENVM debug view. 
This is the same for the SNVM, but in this case, you can also view the individual clients that are present in the SNVM. So we can see here my init stage one client and its start and end page, and my init stage two client and its start and end page. You can also view by pages by entering a start page and an end page, like the ENVM. You can check the page status and also read the pages from the device to check their values in the same way as the ENVM. We've got two options left to look at, debug FPGA array and debug transceiver. Let's have a look at the transceiver first. When this launches, we can see a configuration report for all of the lanes in the transceivers used in the design. There's a PCIe endpoint connected up to the board used in this demo, so all of the transceiver lanes are showing up as green, as they're all configured correctly. You can get information on Core Smartbird, for example, for different loopback modes, for static pattern transmits. You can even open up an eye monitor from the debug transceiver views and check your PCIe state. So for example, if I expand the PCIe over on the left here and select it, I can see the current state that my PCIe is in. And finally, you also have a register access view similar to the MSS register access. So for example, if we add this arbitration register in, we can expand it, see what the bits represent, and also read the register. And you have the ability to write and update the fields in these registers as well. And if we return to Smart Debug, we've one option left, which is the Debug FPGA Array View. This will give you several views, and the first is Live Probes. This is available on several microchip families, and it allows you to bring pins from your FPGA fabric out to dedicated FPGA IOs without reprogramming the FPGA part. Unfortunately, these live probe pins aren't connected on the iSchool kit to show in this demo, but they are available on the part. To use the live probes, select a signal or register from the instances on the left and add it in to the live probe view. You can then assign it to a channel to assign that signal or register to a dedicated I.O. This means, without reprogramming, you could connect a logic analyzer up to the pins and capture a trace of the data in your device. As well as live probes, there's also an active probes view. This is different because it allows you to capture data from the fabric without bringing it out to a package pin. So if we add in this register zero bit here, we can read the active probes to get the current state of the register. And we can also write to the register from the drop down here and write an updated value into it and then read it back to check that it's actually been set. We can also go back and if we want to write a value of zero into the register this time and then read it back and verify it's updated. And we can do this for any selection of signals in the design. There's also a memory blocks view, which allows you to add in SRAM from the design and check its contents. So for example, we've an MSS large SRAM here and we can drag it over into the memory block view and read individual blocks from it to check the contents of the memory available on the FPGA fabric. And as well as being able to read the memory block contents, you can also write to the individual memory blocks. So if we write FFFF0000 into this block, we can see the value updated here. And if we write and read it, it gets stored. So if we add in a different block and read it, we can see this block is all zeros. And if we add in the original block again and read it, we can see the values have updated. We've one final view available for debug FPGA array, and that's the probe insertion view. This feature is similar to the live probes view, but instead of bringing a signal out to a dedicated IO, you can bring it out to any of the available package pins. To do this, let's add in the STIO register that we used in the active probes view. Now you can select a package pin that you would like to route this signal to. So for example, if we choose A7, this is one of the Raspberry Pi IOs on the icicle kit. 
Then we can select Run to generate a bitstream and program the device to bring this pin out. You'll get a warning to let you know that this could take a few minutes and let's just click continue on this. Now that the bitstream has been generated and the device has been programmed, this register bit here has been brought out to the Raspberry Pi I.O. for us. So we could connect up a logic analyzer, for example, and capture a trace of this register bit. And we can do this for any signals in the fabric. So for example, we could select this OR gate here and add it in and bring it out to any of the available package pins in this list here. So that's been a quick look at all of the different smart debug features available for Polar Fire SOC.